Hello, welcome to the 23rd day of February, 2022. My name is Kurt, and this is the Good Life Meditation, an exercise that I perform every morning, first thing after I get up, to recount my life objectives and principles, and to see how I did apply those to yesterday's challenges, and how I slept last night, and to prepare for the coming day. First, uh, last night and yesterday. Pardon me. Pardon me. This old body of mine creaks and groans like an old house. Goodness gracious, we're all... <laughs> I slept pretty good. You think, you know, I think it shows in my face. It really makes a difference whether I get that last hour of sleep or not. I'm definitely not a person that can do without a proper night's sleep. I did wake up, but it was a real in and out, dreamy type of a thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's funny because I, 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 I did get some bad news yesterday for work and I have to break the bad news today. So you'd think that I would have been up, you know, at three, but I wasn't. Hmm. So I feel pretty good. Yesterday was a whew, man, that was a rough day for both Yumiko and I. She, you know, she has the downstairs and I have the upstairs here at, at our home. Uh, you know, for home office, I mean, our working period. So she was really flogging it out yesterday downstairs. And uh, me too. I, I counted, I, I thought, I, I think I mentioned, I thought I had eight meetings yesterday. That was wrong. Ten that I had. Uh, no time for breaks. Uh, I did get a nice walk with Yumiko. And she we walked to the dog park and then she wanted to... Uh, go up into the desert mountains a little bit. So we went up just a little ways. <clears throat> and there are desert flowers blooming. Quite pretty. Yesterday was, if it was the, you know, if it was a, you know, if it was a Roman trying, if life was a Roman trying. <laughs> there you go. I like, I like that. <clears throat> Hold on, excuse me, please. You know, a Roman galley ship, you know, war galley, and, uh, and I was a galley, a galley, galley slave. Yesterday was a full flog, you know, just a full stroke, 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 you know, you know, thank you, sir, may I have another? <laughs> That's what it was like yesterday. No wonder Yumiko and I are just increasingly, you know, during our lunchtime walk together, we walk to the park and we increasingly talk about our fantasy of retirement, you know. And I have, there's a, uh, you know, a calculator I can go and, you know, look at my pension, <laughs> plug in dates. And when I'm having a really bad day, I plug in dates that are more sooner than uh, later. And tell her, well, you know, we, if, we, if we retire this date, then we can do this, that, and the other thing. You know, I guess it's a sign that we, you know, we really are getting near the end of our, our working lives, or at least our tolerance of it. <clears throat> First world dilemma, right? Otherwise, nothing to report yesterday. It was just a hard day at work. Today will be another good day, not like yesterday, though. Today will be another solid day, although I do, I do have that bad news to report. And I have a touchy meeting to attend. Hmm. More noises from the gal. More no noises from the creaking ship. Okay, let's do the good life. Excuse me, just a second. It's good to try to get the house settled. Oh, and it's raining, so I can hear rain dropping on the roof above. I like that about this place. It, uh, you can hear the sound of the, of the rain outside easily. It's quite nice. I want to make sure that I'm always prepared to not be here by having all my affairs in order, all my relationships in order, and my life to work in as settled a state as possible.
I want to make good use of my time so that my days are worthwhile. Even though that worth may be a relative thing, no absolute sense, never really done yet. I feel like things are done. Funny how 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 upfront, almost flippant, Yumiko is about death. She uh, doesn't fool herself. Although although it's not a topic she enjoys talking about, she won't bring it up, and she won't suffer me to indulge it for very long. She will point the fact out, as she did yesterday when we were talking uh, during dinner. So, in the spirit of her wisdom, I want to make good use of time so that there's no longing backward glance when uh, I slip away, if there's enough moments for me to realize that I'm slipping away. Just a steady, maybe a tremulous, depending on how, the, how I would, how I die. But if I can, a, stem, a steady uh, peace-conveying glance into the eyes of my loved ones before uh, the life is uh, washed from my eyes. That's the state that I want to live in at all times by virtue of taking the day seriously having things in order and living a deliberate life. <clears throat> I also want to work hard on my objectives and principles to make sure that they are sound, to grow them if necessary, and to uh, cull them when I find that they are fraud. I want to uh, develop into a position where I can react emotionally well to whatever is happening in life, even if it be my own imminent death, even if it be the uh, imminent death of my wife or my daughter. To remain grounded and situated with my feet plant, firm, planted firmly upon the earth, even as the earth crumbles around me. I want to find a way to make my passage through life something where grass will grow in my wake. and not a soiled earth, a good earth, for my having been here. And to remember my limits and to recognize my opportunities and to only do one thing at a time, to never multitask. And whatever it is that I'm doing, to do it slowly, deliberately, thinking and enunciating each word and syllable as I go. There's no hurry. And I want to fight myself. I want to challenge myself to question the things that I think are true and to appraise and do likewise for the things that other people claim are true 
which they want me to believe, and which I think are important. And to be a man of reason, of honesty, of objectivity, and always a skeptic for the important stuff. And to remember that I don't have anything in me that will last longer than my own mortal life. Because there's nothing in me that is immortal. At least nothing that is in me that is immortal beyond my atoms. Which even they have a tendency sometimes to turn into energy. And to remember that this small flickering mortality of my own is uh, alone, quite alone. Like a, a candle in a, in, a, in a room full of candles, each candle flickering, guttering, sometimes burning nicely, but always running lower on wax and never together. Always each candle is separate and will one day go out either through a, a gust of wind or through the uh, consumption of fuel. So to me, so to you. And to remember that all of the concepts of good and evil and right and wrong that I hold in my mind extend no further than my mind. They're preferences, just like my preference for the color blue. So too my, my preference for justice and virtue, where the particulars are laid out in my mind based on my experience and my, my sense of order and reason. These things do not exist outside me nor do they exist outside of you. But they become stronger when you and I discuss them and agree. And they're even strengthened away when we disagree, because that sows doubt, which is a good thing if we're uh, dealing with important stuff. <clears throat> and that I'll have my life purpose, which is to be a father, a good father at that, be a virtuous human being, where virtue is defined as cultivating the improvement of the well-being of creatures, particularly thinking creatures, where well-being may ultimately defined, be defined down to the happiness of them, where that happiness does not come at the undue expense of others. I like the way that's rounding out. And then my final purpose, of course, is the sharing of my own story in my book, Going Alone. Available on Amazon or at goingalone.org. And then to remember that what I am <clears throat> eventually boils down to atoms and energy. excuse me, <clears throat> on a creaking ship, a settling house that will uh, quite soon fall away to uh, its constituent parts. But while I am what I am, I have a particular nature, as everything does, animate or inanimate, you and me. And it's good to seek out what that nature is with the stuff that I have to deal with or that I choose to deal with so that I can reckon the universe according to how it really is and deal with it on its uh, true terms or apparently true terms 
ever the skeptic. And to remember that free will appears to be an illusion. That uh, our lives are more like a, a pinball. More like a pachinko ball. Once jettisoned by the forces of circumstance bouncing through life, jostled to the left and the right and up and down, forward and back by circumstance. So many uh, happenings all around us. None of them really are of our authorship. Even when they seem like they're the authorship of others, they in turn <clears throat> have their own feign off of authors that eventually come back to nothing more than energy and entropy. So I'm thinking I'm making these decisions when in fact I would have uh, never make make this I would never make the same decision differently should the universe rewind and repeat. So they're not my own. Although I will uh, take a deep breath <clears throat> and ascribe responsibility to my decisions nonetheless, even though I acknowledge they're not my own. Because how else can I live better than to uh, play along? And then to recognize that as I proceed and I make decisions some of which are a mistake, and some of which are successes. I'll remember those things to the best of my ability and then be strong in the uh, application of better decisions in the future and the avoidance of the mistakes I've already made. This I will call maturity. And even though I wrote a book called Going Alone, the story isn't about going alone. It's about one another. It's a story of society. It's a story of family. And the story of commitment. And the harvest that is yielded of solid focus on things larger than ourselves. And I'll work to communicate effectively to compose my paragraphs and my sentences deliberately to read them or think them through twice thrice before utterance or sharing and to be very careful to cultivate an excellent vocabulary but then to use that vocabulary carefully and deliberately and never in a showy manner. And then to avoid gossip, where gossip is easily spotted as conversation about someone who isn't there, where I would be embarrassed should I discover suddenly that they are there and overhearing what I'm saying. I won't do that. I won't talk about other people in ways that, to which I should be ashamed. I just move the conversation along or keep my mouth closed. To live a, a life of temperance, of deliberate and controlled consumption, fewer bites than I might want, fewer sips, a little less overtime, a little less play, a little more sleep, within reason, but not too much, forming for myself a simple life, a life where there is some suffering as I deny myself what I want. 
and a life where I can recognize what is outside of my control and bear that well. A remembrance that living is some measure of horror that to every one of our lives there is some horror in the worst means possible that seems to come. Some might be quite blessed not to perceive it or to experience it and to be snuffed out suddenly and to not even experience the horror of a slow death. But to a lot, a lot of us, life is a, a true horror show. And not just us, our, our pets too, and the animals that we consume, and the creatures out there in the, in the night, in the day, in the wilderness, living their own lives, the horrors there too. And then the horror. comes to us. And I don't want to forget that. I want to be ready for it. And I want to work to alleviate the horror when I see it and encounter it in my life now. And I want to bear whatever piece of it that I'm going to carry. I'll bear other things too. I will bear my responsibilities, namely my responsibility to my family, to work hard at a job that I don't always like, <laughs> to get up long before dawn every morning, even on my days off, so that I can pursue a better life, a good life. I'll be, do my best to find a way, to endeavor to continue to find a way to communicate with my mother effectively, to bear her ministrations of pain, to help her some way, to ease her own pain. Will not, will not seeking to execute any sort of retribution or reaction, even to what she does. I'll bear that too. And to remember that there's this great backdrop of emptiness in the universe that I call the great indifference that we can see if we go alone, if we go far enough, it's plain. And if we put aside the distractions that cause us to not see. And to be content where I am now doing what I'm doing now and being who I am right now. Well, all the while working to move forward to a better life in incremental bits and pieces by thinking about the way forward, planning considering my options, standing ready to make a decision, and also ready to execute, utilizing my gut feeling, where there are not quite enough facts to make a fully informed choice. And to remember to seek after the deeper challenge of life, if we're so compelled to, to do so. Some don't seem to be. That deeper challenge being discovering uh, about ourselves, 
and then living according or in better accord with our nature. While all the while also seeking after the more readily apprehended and pursued challenges of education, career, family, home, security. And to never knowingly be false or believe things too easily or dwell too long in hope, uncoupled from action, and to always distrust faith and authority and dogma. So to superstition and to never gossip again. And to remember that as I have no soul, that when I'm dead, I'll be gone. I'm not really back to mystery. I expect just back to whatever state I was in before I was born, before I was conceived, before my, my mind switched on. And as a result, I'll, I'll never see any of you again or my family. So I better enjoy it while it lasts. Hold them close while I can. Try to work out any difference in the available differences in the available time and uh, level justice where possible and within the sanctioned means. And I'm glad that I have my great life adventure and that it continues to unfold. And I recommend that path to others to start especially young in the 20s or sooner. And to write down whatever words come of our life, to leave them, prepare to leave them behind as our, as our last, uh, our last token. But as I do, I leave my book on my shelf here for my daughter to find. And to remember that though I strive for the bullseye, I typically miss. And that life is an uphill climb and an arena where we can develop good and sound life principles and then use these to live better and to be content with less. And to enjoy life, to have fun. Well, there's my good life meditation for today. I think I'll sign off now, but not before I think about the coming day. I, I have a feeling that today's going to be a really good day. Just all the, all the little bits seem to be well positioned for that. I'm going to take the day very slowly and deliberately, and I'm definitely going to take my breaks. I might combine my two breaks into one and do a nice uh, 30 minute yoga session over there on the floor. I've got a perfect spot to do it. And I'll continue, after work, I'll continue reading in Aristotle. I'm almost finished with the book on politics, the best one of the, the four that I've read of his. One to remember. And then I'll enjoy a nice walk with my wife at lunchtime and a nice dinner with my family afterwards. And then I'll go back to bed and have a nice full night's sleep. And I'll, if I'm lucky, sleep until the alarm goes off tomorrow. Okay, that's good. Have a good day. Be safe, but not too safe. <laughs>